te puede estar deteniendo. Scrum and uh, a mixed uh, methods, methodology 
uh, will be employed to evaluate the task force with the users, uh, the technological assistance, etc. Also, to, to contextualize the, the project, a systematic literature review is, is proposed to know different solutions, uh, past solutions in the literature. Uh, this is conducted under the guidelines proposed by Kitzenham and uh, following these guidelines uh, the SLR is composed of three main phases planning, conducting and reporting and disseminating the results. Also, uh, the framework uh, has a lot of uh, theoretical uh, has a part in which the domain is studied because it is very important uh, as task for us very, are very, diff uh, very complex tools uh, we need to know uh, the, com the domain and for that we use uh, meta modeling and domain engineer in order to analyze the, the domain of task force uh, what are meta models? Uh, these are like generic structures and relations uh, that can be instantiated into concrete models. So in this case, we will have a skeleton for dashboard that we will instantiate to adapt them into different models. Uh, so the current status of, of this project is, is in the development stage. As I said before, a systematic literature review has been performed to gain knowledge about this domain. In this case, uh, we, we search for uh, existing approaches and solutions that have tackled tailoring capabilities of dashboards. Uh, these were the, the different process questions. The first question were more focused on technical um, features and the fifth question uh, was a question regarding the application of artificial intelligence into this context and then uh, also a question regarding the evaluation of these tools with users or real data or something. So mm, the results of, of the SLR are published but uh, one of the most important part was that, that artificial intelligence wasn't really applied uh, into this context, so we think this could be potentially uh, useful to automate this configuration of uh, And of course, the, uh, this game knowledge is being used to uh, create a framework for uh, generating that. Also, uh, the meta model has been developed. Uh, it's composed of three main sections, the user, the layout, and the components, and each section is related to each other because the user influenced the dashboard. Uh, the whole meta model in the end describes a high level view of, of dashboard with the common features and properties. So these are the parts. Uh, I'm not going to stop here because there is a lot of information, but we take into account different characteristics of the users, the goals that they want to achieve with the dashboard, uh, the different components that could be. Uh, with this uh, skeleton, we could instantiate uh, different kinds of charts. So, uh, to conclude, the proposed research is focused on developing tailored solutions regarding decision making processes. Uh, a systematic literature review has been performed to, to gain knowledge, to contextualize this, this work, and the meta model has been developed with a uh, high level features and processes. The next step will employ this meta model to instant, instantiate concrete task force to generate the code subsequently, and we think that uh, this automatic generation could improve the effectiveness of the tools by adapting them <coughs> to different user needs and different contexts. So, thank you very much. Thank you, Andrea. So, we will continue with the uh, theoretical and methodological proposals that is the development of critical thinking through mathematical modeling in the training of engineers. Presented by Jacqueline Ateo. Uh,
morning. I'm Jacqueline Acebo. I'm student of the, the PhD, the Educational Innovation Program of the Technic of Metabay in Mexico. Uh, my advisor is Dr. Lugo Rodriguez, and I'm going to share with you my advances of thesis name. Oh, still now. Theoretical and methodological proposals on the development of critical thinking through mathematical modeling in the training of engineers. Well, the context is the introduction, research problem, framework, method, and final consideration. Okay, according to the United Union, uh, the world uh, population reached 7.2 billion right now. But uh, uh, by 2025 years, in, in the year 2025, we're going to add one billion more. So this um, the growth will happen, will, try, uh, will come with a lot of challenges. One more, uh, some of them, for example, is the supply of energy, the supply of the uh, um, uh, production, and the supply of other things. Okay? So these are great problems, and to face them, we need that the engineers can, um, can develop skills not only disciplinary, but generic. Well, in this research, we study the mathematical modeling to develop uh, the competence of critical thinking. This competence is one of the most important in the 21 uh, century. Well, this is um, for students in teaching and learning of mathematics. The research problem or the question, the general question is how can critical thinking competence be developed through the implementation of mathematical modeling in a mathematics course for uh, future engineers? These are the five subordinate questions emerged from the ger general questions. What is and what would be the level of mathematical modeling that is developed during the mathematics course for engineering students? What is the type of critical thinking that is and can be developed in that courses? What are the skills that characterize a critical thinker who has developed them through mathematical modeling? Uh, how can the different, different disciplines of STEM be integrated when using mathematical modeling strategy? And what are the disciplinary and transversal advantages of using mathematical modeling uh, for being a collective activity? Well, uh, first we are going to talk about the <coughs> mathematical modeling. The, this strategy uh, relates the mathematical world with the real world. Uh, we can see this cycle of human lay, and these are some steps in this cycle. There are phases, and it is not linear, it is uh, cyclical, so that you can come back uh, to the phases. First, the students must understand the problem. Uh, for understanding the problem, he, uh, the student must construct sim uh, simplifying, structuring to uh, state. Uh, the relevance, uh, the relevance uh, data to uh, have a solution for the problem. When you have uh, that problem, then you understand it, and then you are going to translate it to a mathematical model. So uh, you have to make calculations and uh, use equations to look for a result. The result must be interpreted and must be validated in the real world. If not, uh, well, you must return to some phases, the previous phases, to look for a solution that can be valid validated and exposed. Critical thinking. Well, we can define critical thinking by three approaches. The first one, the philosophical focus in the attitudes, and a critical thinker in this, in this approach is uh, the one who can see and re reveal the facts, having an open mind, um, the skepticism, having a skepticism mentality, uh, confidence, a great curiosity. Uh, and in the case of the psychological approach, this focus on the skills, for example, argumenting, uh, comparing, analyzing, uh, formulating hypotheses, synthesizing, 
and um, creation of new ideas. And the educational approach uh, uh, considers both skills and attitudes or disposition. Well, so we can say that critical thinking is the reflect, reflective and reasonable thinking um, that focuses on deciding what to do or do. Well, uh, the research method. In this study, the mixed method of uh, equality, I'm sorry, uh, equality will be used, and participants will be uh, student engineers in different disciplines. Um, the collection data will want to use two instruments. Uh, one of them is the Cornell Critical Thinking Test. This uh, instrument, although it's validated, we translate it to Spanish, so we are, we are validating it right now. And the second one instrument is a rubric that evaluates both critical thinking and other uh, mathematical modeling. This instrument, uh, we design it and we are going to validate it in, in this, uh, this semester. Well, uh, two pilot tests uh, were carried out. Well, they are carried out. Uh, we carried out, but we are uh, in the process of validating both of them. Uh, uh, we are planning to make observations in class, interviews with students. Um, uh, well, this is, this is study will be carried out during the, the, se the next uh, semester, uh, in ja uh, January to June, May, June in 2020. Work 
centered specifically on visual frames in the visual component. So uh, we think the, uh, our work, a study uh, using printing theory, to examine how refugees are visually uh, visually represented in news media and social media in Europe is of great interest and is pertinent. Uh, it's a purely theoretical framework. Uh, regarding the framing theory, we know, according to the framing theory, we know um, media, uh, media professionals, usually frame reality by selecting uh, attributes, selecting some elements, and selecting their uh, hierarchy of these elements within the text or image in the media. Influencing like this a uh, specific way of thinking. And on the other hand, in this sense, the Western media usually depict migrants and refugees in a negative way, uh, especially migrants. But when the, when the, the, the subject, the, the theorist, um, the subject is basically a refugee, this coverage, this representation, Good barriers, good, uh, good, good divert. According to Robert and Ramo and Maris, the European media transmits a vision of solidarity and humanist vision of refugees. However, in the Asian media, this frame, the frame that seems to stand out, to, to be highlighted, is that which represents refugees as a threat, as a problem to, to Brazilian society. Um, so this situation we are going to analyze to try to, to study of uh, four mainly four frames in a specific uh, in a specific way that we have identified in the uh, in the literature. So the two most negative uh, frames identified in this, in this field uh, are those that represent migration as a possible barrier and as a possible threat to Western societies. The Brazilian countries. Uh, we have here uh, an example: one bottom frame and the third frame. This one is the same. And the most positive frames regarding the, the effect of these frames to be more of the, 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 <coughs> on the attitudes, what types are those? The victimization frame and the normalization frame. We have here an example the victimization frame and the normalization frame. So, the, uh, what are the objectives of this, of this research plan? Uh, to know really main, the, the main goal, the main objective, is to know uh, how these frames could affect could influence the attitudes uh, of the uh, Westerners towards the, these groups, their migration and refuge. So, the future methods we are going to, to carry out in the first uh, phase is a content analy analysis, content analysis of the images of the pictures, pictures transmitted by the news media, the European media. In the second phase, we are going to to carry out a photo analysis of the test uh, disseminated by Twitter in Europe. In the third phase, uh, we are going to carry out a sentiment analysis. And the last phase is going to be an uh, experiment to analyze the real effect of these frames, <coughs> from, from visual frames or the animals. <coughs> uh, research today, uh, we, are, uh, we have developed in the first phase, the, the compromise of, um, of, the, of the visual frames, of the picture of the, of the European media. <laughs> and the results are in, in summary like this. Uh, we know, uh, as we knew, as we post, the representation in general terms is negative, adding together the bottom of the first frame. And the, the German country, the German media, uh, spread, disseminate uh, more frequently negative frames. Maybe because of, uh, that's why, because, of, uh, that's because the, the German media, the German country, 
uh, has the, um, the highest number of acidic application. Um, in general terms, this representation is more, is more negative now in the last period, in the last stage of the migration crisis than previous uh, phases. Previous phase. So um, this uh, dissertation is expected to be uh, to contribute in a theoretical, in a methodological, and in a practical way because we are providing uh, material and instruments to to uh, to keep going, to keep um, advancing, improving uh, this, uh, this this kind of uh, method, the quantum analysis, quantum analysis, um, especially uh, focused in, in the wave migration and refuge. And this knowledge, this empirical knowledge, uh, could be used to make advices and recommendations to for media, <coughs> media professionals and policy makers. So that's all. I'll thank you for your attention. Okay, so giving a little bit of the research context, as I mentioned, this became part of a 
very big project, the Binational Laboratory in Smart Sustainable Energy Management and Technology Project in Mexico. And as I did mention, this project was huge. There were 12 Mexico Finland courses that were created. However, in regards to my dissertation, I am analyzing five of them. You can see the titles here, and as you can see, most of them have the theme of energy somehow related to it. And since the Mexican reform has been taking place, we're also making changes in the way uh, energy and sustainability works for future generations. So it was important to also include that on the list. And what's interesting is that all of these courses had a special innovation in them. For example, one of them had elements of gamification, another one had an element of having to use their phone so that they could see virtual reality and somehow interact with the knowledge in their way. And in another one, there was peer review, so they had to interact more with the people that were also taking the course. In other words, each one of the courses had a very specific, innovative approach to try to treat the subject regarding the Mexico Green Island course. And through the analysis, we're trying to determine did they have a better experience through gamification or peer review, or maybe virtual reality had a big impact. So that's something that we're trying to analyze through this dissertation as well. Uh, regarding the status right now, as I'm standing here in front of you, so far we have received 308 replies in the pre-post survey. That means that people got answered both pre and post. Sometimes I had the opportunity of finding that some people only answered the pre or only answered the post, so I can do the analysis of both. But that's part of the project and that's part of learning. You just have to clean up the data and figure out what data you can use. Uh, the calculation of the data between the users and their demographic information has also taken place already. So uh, we have been determining the age group of the people, where they are located, and what has been mostly their replies depending on their level of education as well. Uh, also, 16 interviews have been taking place. Eight of the interviews were conducted to people that actually finished the course. That means they answered the pre and post, they answered the whole MOOC, and they were willing to give their opinions. However, it was also important for us to take into consideration what the people that didn't finish the MOOC thought was important, or what made them say, I don't feel as engaged with this massive open of course, and I'm just going to desert and not finish it. So we want to hear the perspective of both, those who finish and those who don't. So eight interviews were created to people that finished, eight to those that didn't, and we're going to compare their perspective and what made them be more engaged, what made them say, I don't want to finish this, and if they were more interested or not in education for sustainable development once they finished the course. And regarding statistics, uh, the surveys that were run before were on the Likert scale, and so far we're running the management need test for non-parametric variables or from the surveys to determine if before and after the treatment of the Mexico criminal life curse, they had a positive or negative influence on how they pursued sustainable development. This, all of this project, all of these ideas are with one goal. To define the following question. What strategies can help education for sustainable development be taught in a more interactive and interesting way? But even if it's through this, even if it's through the screen, what will help people become more aware about this topic which has become very trendy worldwide. And my presentation stopped. But, yeah, there we go. Currently process. Okay, so it's a circle, it's a circle of life, because as any process in research, I think that I'm done with the phase, but then I have to go back and rework some stuff. But uh, so far, what has been completed, per se, is the gathering of the data, the surveys have been answered, the courses have been run, and the interviews have been made. Right now, I'm working on the analysis and the transcription of the interviews, which are really long, around an hour, an hour and thirty each interview. So that's taking a little bit of time, but I think it's worth the effort. And the goal is to finish the chapter for results and conclusions by May 2020. So that's where I'm standing right now, and I really do hope that if you're interested about the topic about education for sustainable development, we can get in touch and we can collaborate in the future. Thank you.
9 a.m. So I don't know when I'm like morning. morning. So thank you so much. My name is Antonio Cachola. I'm a PhD student. I'm came from Mexico. Well, we are Mexico, but uh, we live in Monterrey. So we study at Tecnológico de Monterrey. I'm going to talk about my dissertation. At this moment, the, the, the name, the status name, is Digital Adult Literacy in Virtual Learning Environments, the case of XMOOCs in Energy Sustainability. My advisor is the Dr. <coughs> Leonardo David Glasserman, and we have been working a lot with this, uh, with this project. So I'm going to start with my presentation. The outline is going to be like this, the context and the motivation of my dissertation, the state of the art, the problem, some of the methods, and the next step. So, um, right now, as we know, uh, technolo the technology is changing everything. It's changing the humanity, it's changing the economy, it's changing the society. So that's why technology, in fact, my focus is especially in adults. I want to know more the adults because normally children and young people adapt to the technology. That's why some authors call these, these people digital natives. natives. But I know that it's a concept that is contradictory and we pass that concept that I want to bring here, okay? So, because I, I review the literature. And sometimes the authors call digital immigrants to these adults because sometimes not all the adults have some problems with the technology, right? So, uh, So, we, the literature says that sometimes adults can be considered a digital illiterate because they don't have the skills, the attitudes, the competence, the habits to use and apply the technology, not only to search information, because they, they need to use this technology to uh, be in this society. So my dissertation is especially in a context in a context of most technological in Monterrey in 2016 designed and launched, as Monse said, 12 moves about energy and sustainability. When I review the literature and compare what is happening with adults in this context, we saw that between 1 and 5% of, of completion, competition rate for this MOOC. So normally when we have students, as institution, we want to finish all the students, they need to finish all the courses. But in MOOCs, the range of completion, completion is between 1 and 5%. But I have to say that at Tecnológico de Monterrey, they have a average above this percentage because it's around 15, 20% of completion rate. We are an exception, but in general, the completion rate is about five and one to five percent. So this is a low. This is a big problem. In general, no, no adults or Young people for everything. And especially my dissertation is going to conduct about this concept, digital literacy. Obviously, I know that sometimes digital literacy and competence, digital competence is similar. Sometimes digital literacy we use in North America, but Digital competence is used similar to this concept in Europe. 
and my dissertation is going to be about this concept, digital text. So, my question is this. How the level of digital literacy of adults be evaluated in an Xmod courses on MRE sustainability? Why? Because we want to design an evaluation model to measure the level of digital literacy of participants in Xmod courses of energy sustainability with the intention of having a frame of reference for the Xmod courses of the energy project. For this investigation, we want to use a mixed method with a sequential explanatory research design. At this time, we are analy analyzing a lot of information from a pre, a pre survey and a final survey that a lot of students answer from since 2016 from now. So we are working on this. Uh, information, the quantitative uh, phase, and then right now we are working, trying to pilot this second phase about the quantitative phase. We are going to pilot focus group, uh, semi structured interview, and another, and yes, I think those, those uh, instruments. So, our status right now is, uh, as I said, we are designing and piloting these quality instruments and we are uh, waiting for the feedback and observation from the doctoral committee. So, thank you so much. This is my advisor. And take a picture of this. <laughs> Thinking in the students, no matter what they carry, they select. 
I mean, no matter if it's an engineering, if it's an educator, if it's a businessman, we need people with these abilities. And by the other hand, the university has the responsibility to impact in a positive way in the social or in the environmental to solve a lot, uh, the, the problems that we have. Then, I organized the research, the research framework in three dimensions. The first one is the social entrepreneurship competencies. Why? Why is it important to develop this kind of competencies? Because a social entrepreneur is a person that is able to create, sustain, distribute, and disseminate social or environmental value. And they, they need to develop a set of knowledge, skills, and attitudes that the university must take the responsibility of, of this. And these kinds of competencies are developed in, in linkage processes where the university interacts with the industry, the government, or society, that this is a quadruple model, and they cre it creates multidisciplinary teams which develop innovative products or services to collaborate and to open okay, collaborative work of a group. And this this model uh, creates an, an environmental learning that is called experiential learning, where the learning is constructed by knowledge, by the knowledge, value, and skill from the direct experience. I mean, the students go outside the, the classroom, the university, to know what, is, what to know their problems of the of the society, and they can propose some solutions to those problems. And the, the objective is to assess the extent to which social entrepreneurship. Competencies are developed with experiential learning, tra experiential learning training models that promote the participation of students in projects related to this linkage. So to get that, I need to analyze the entrepreneur pro uh, analyze the social entrepreneur profiles, cases of linking and conceptualization of stakeholders like teachers, students, entrepreneurs. And the main objective is to develop a training model for develop this kind of competencies, no matter what area of the student is, is in the university. To get that, I have developed this mixed method study that is divided into phases. The first one, uh, the, the objective of the first one is to explore how to develop this competency through quantitative and qualitative instruments. And the second one is to, no, okay, I'm going to analyze the entrepreneur uh, profile and how the competency is developed. Then, uh, there has been, I'm going to make an intervention in a project with a group of students and I'm going to analyze the results with quantitative and qualitative uh, instruments in the phase two. With a linker scale, some interviews, observation, and a rubric to evaluate that. So the variables to study are the social entrepreneurship competencies, university linkage, and the experiential learning as a training educational model. The sampling are entrepreneurs, employers, and the color experts, teachers, and students. The dissertation status, well, I have developed the theoretical framework, the nature and dimension of the subject of study, and right now I'm working on the methodological proposed. And I'm, I just started to prove some instruments um, that in the pilot team, and I'm, I'm trying to make a good uh, methodological framework to, to the research. So this is the status. And finally, the expected contributions with this research is to provide value knowledge that allows higher education institutions and others to find guidelines to develop competencies required for the 21st century society and their students, in their students. 
and to contribute to the field of study of education and the social entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship field. And finally, well, create the model to develop this kind of competences. And I think that's all. Thank you very much for listening. Now I am going to explain 
uh, some questionnaires that we select for the analysis. Okay, we have cooperative institutional research program, the questionnaire, emphasize the previous studies of the person. This is a case in this, in this field. Also, the trajectory of the parents, the influence in this choice, and their way to decide the studies. Uh, with the objective of being able to detect the influence that this condition has on the person or the decision of which study to carry out. The Rose Questionnaire, uh, the rele Relevance of Science Education Questionnaire, which are the emotional factors of special relevance for the learning of science and technology. The interest, attitude, and experience of the students in science and technology are evaluated. As well as their opinion on environment, challenge, and professional aspirations. The third thing is very important because it's a valid instrument that um, study the four areas of STEM science, technology, engineering, and mathematics in relation um, with their affinity and their interest in these areas. The each school it was created to assist the factor involved in educational choice as well as in the STEM sector. And finally, sustainability and gender in gender shape survey includes questions about students' career goals, experience in science and mathematics, achievement in science, this is important, is, uh, attitude in, is students' attitudes about sustainability, science and gender and democratic importance. Um, this study um, is important um, why uh, context in this area is to detect the motivation of the individual in relation uh, with the academic decisions and the influence established by the decision of the school directory, the academic achievements, the recommendation and the work of the parent and the stereotype uh, ideas. Uh, all of these are variables of future analysis in the thesis. And the review of instruments was, has been the beginning uh, of the methodological design of the empirical study of the thesis. And it was allowed uh, as a visualist the field for a closer perspective in the area of the quantitative design of the study. And thank you. <laughs> Uh, bring us 
opportunities and challenges at the same time for educators, which we all know that education is a central part in the knowledge society. And China is a very uh, one of the large technology and the world countries in the East. Uh, the, the, the educational information in China is not developing as it is on Twitter, which is highlighted in the, the in, in there, are, there are some national um, there are some people divide gap and also some gap during the countries, the different parts. And to realize the state of the art, we did a systematic review of the literature and the study of mapping. And I want to mention here, especially, uh, especially that uh, apart from the well-known uh, database, the well-known science and scopus, I also add the China National Knowledge Infrastructure because there are so many high-quality individual articles that was written in Chinese, but it's put in this database. And I realized, uh, I found that the research about this topic in Western countries, for example, European, United States, uh, they are focused on these four things, policy and certain documents, organizational infrastructures, strategy leadership, and teachers and their teaching practice, and also these four in five aspects. You can see very clear on the screen. And move on to the research. Uh, on this topic in China. The first publication about digital competence was published in 1963. And from this chart, we can see that uh, the tendency of publication related with this topic has been going uh, since the year 2000. And the research on digital competence of college students and teachers in China is mainly <coughs> focused on some literacies, for example, uh, digital literacy, uh, information literacy, and the use of uh, information communication technological tools. And, but to be honest, when you search directly the digital competence in this database, it doesn't appear a lot. It is very rare. And um, in this uh, research, I did a empirical work in the University of Cancer Andrew Tucker University. I use a uh, mixed method because it could allow me to access more information and it could try, uh, provide me quantitative and qualitative data. So, uh, I set two general research questions here. The first one is what's the current situation on digital confidence of university students in Western China? And the next one is what's the actual state on digital confidence of university teaching? teaching stuffs in this in, uh, in Western world. And the, the population and the sample. The population of this study is made up of the students and teachers in this university called Tansu Andrew Kaku University, which was, uh, is established in 1946. Mm -hmm. And it is also an uh, excellent agricultural university in the western part of China. And the sample here are uh, teachers from different faculty and departments. For students, I selected the first and the last and then new students because they have a large population. And now I'm in the process of collecting the data. I use um, Kotlix a platform, which can, you can use it to distribute the survey to collect the the, the questionnaire results. And later, when I have the data collection, I may use the program SPAS or the Google 10 to make the analysis about the quantity and quality data. And the current results that I have are these two questionnaires for teachers and students. I built two questionnaires, but the questions in these two questionnaires are both based on the uh, e-commerce self-assessment test, which is a multilingual online tool, has already been validated by previous investigations. And for students, I also choose a Chinese article, uh, a Chinese article that has a validated, validated um, instrument. 
the, the part of the safety consciousness to put this in the questionnaire, my questionnaires for students. And you can see very clear the arrival in this instrument. And we move on to the teacher's part. We ask them about their um, personal information, the, the, how they use the technological tools, and the level how they conduct the, the, these um, digital tools in their classroom. And I also add some uh, teachers' attitude and the difficulties when, what they have facing in using these technological tools in their classroom. And at last, I also ask for some suggestions for improvement. Okay, the dissertation statues. So far, while doing the theoretical part, the work part has already been set up, and I'm in the process of writing the data. I'm using the copies again. And the current and the expected contributions. Uh, current and expected contributions. I hope um, after analyzing the survey results from different perspectives, knowing introduce the present level, I, I could know the actual state of uh, our digital confidence of teachers and uh, students in the western part of China. I hope uh, I want to explore whether it exists some phen phenomena of digital divide related to genders careers, uh, ages, and uh, majors. Also, I hope the results from the data could provide uh, effect in collect connecting Eastern and Western uh, investigates about digital competence in higher education. For example, if we have the results, we could compare it with um, some institution in Europe and make a, make a comparison. Also, I hope the the systematic literature review that I did to offer a useful reference that could help other uh, educators in the future. And at the last, the, real, the results obtained could give not only the Chinese teachers but also a worldwide uh, educator a different direction about developing teaching method and build a considered pedagogical model. Um, Of PhD, 
Uh, my family is very important. I'm a member of Benfica too. Uh, my motivation uh, is clear. Uh, most of my professional life is dedicated to teach programming. I like very much teach programming. Uh, I think uh, is the, the, the best way to uh, do it the PhD. Uh, of course, improve my way of teaching and uh, help students. Um, this is uh, the state of art. Uh, uh, everything in this area know these concepts, but uh, programming is difficult because it's uh, different uh, of mathematics or physics and uh, is very recent of uh, compared with maths or physics. Uh, as a consequence of this, students uh, without motivation and uh, quite failure rates. My student group uh, is, uh, I think, I have a, a special characteristic because it's an uh, 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 institute uh, in the year of Portugal, uh, very uh, little, and uh, was only not the first choice of students. The average grades in recent years is between 10 and 12 in reality. Uh, students reveal some difficulties in the, in the different areas. Many students never had the opportunity to develop or practice the personal thinking activities. Um, this is the problem. Um, or the students don't have the minimal uh, competence for the area. I think is uh, more important. Um, what you want, uh, what, what, what you can do it for for this uh, determine the factors of the most influence the teaching, identify the techniques, uh, building a profile of students. Evaluate the, with a predictive model um, the, the, the result of the, the students and the create immediate action plan to, to, to help the students. This is um, um, a prototype of uh, what uh, I want with the building skills in the introductory program. Uh, a set of uh, subjects or activities and uh, with the results um, create a um, uh, score uh, for students and uh, a little with the gamification uh, I have uh, 1000 in score, you have uh, 15 and uh, I think it's uh, work well. Some, uh, some examples of activities, um, more uh, in the area of computational thinking. I tried the first uh, classes, uh, and the uh, students enjoyed uh, very well, very well, very good. Um, another uh, activities with the, the, the programs of the, of the programs of subject of the, the programming language and uh, I want to try with uh, the learning styles activity with the uh, of students and uh, I think it's uh, important um, to develop um, uh, a neural network to predict the the success of, uh, uh, of students um, and with, with this uh, action is important 
if the statements go to file, uh, plans to, to improve the test case. At conclusion, I want uh, I want this. I want to see to look at uh, students and uh, look the profile and to help him in the weakness of the uh, parts of the, the subject of the course. And uh, if uh, if they are a good programmer, uh, they are skills to the all of areas in the in the world, I see.
the presentation in three uh, stage. We describe the three, but uh, we, we will focus on the diagnostic stage result. In the diagnostic stage, we uh, apply instrument to uh, measure the ability. First, motivational strategy for learning questionnaire and documentative dimensional analysis of our clinical thinking test. So today, what do you have? In the developmental state, we carry out a pedagogical activity of clinical debate. We uh, use um, Digalo software called Digalo 2 to uh, generate a debate, critical debate between the uh, students. We uh, use two uh, instruments to recollect information to a qualitative analysis. The individual with a community questionnaire, video, and the register of the argumentative discussion. In the evaluation state, we uh, try to uh, get uh, the report, the final report by the student. Uh, we get we got the, the marks and uh, through our rubric, and we um, try to get the perception of the student from the activity, the pedagogical activity. Well, the results of the diagnostic state, if we uh, observe and review each uh, graphic, we can uh, observe the sample gets a um, moderate and adequate uh, performance. For example, in a quantitative analysis, they uh, get or got sorry, uh, a 52% of the hundred. Uh, the maximum possible points are uh, 41, and the, the media uh, gets 21. Uh, respect the motivated uh, strategy for learning questionnaire. Okay. Um, of course, the same. The in both scale, the sample show uh, adequate uh, level in the scale total, the total scale and the sub scale. So we can uh, describe the profile of this sample. They. Um, they are students uh, who are who, who consider the, um, to understand the concept of a subject is so uh, very important, and they um, are motivated principally. They say uh, are motivated to uh, the achievement of the learning rather than the marks. Well, uh, they uh, believe if they. Uh, work, property, study, property, the content, they can get a higher and effective learning. They uh, two person uh, show a uh, lower anxiety, so we that suggests uh, they don't block uh, front or during uh, evaluation. Um, well, however, despite this um, positive uh, belief or disposition to the learning, um, the student usually use lower cognitive strategies to uh, manage the knowledge. They uh, usually use organizational uh, strategy rather than elaborating. Okay. Uh, they uh, uh, with difficult deep on the contents or the ideas uh, in a in a 
will uh, cross the, the demand of the, the, the gallery. To be continued. Thank you. <laughs> Thank 
csinálni szentet. So, uh, we have uh, many goals uh, for, for the research. Um, the identification of the of, um, categories um, for the uh, for educational interest um, around the, the podcasts. For um, study the, the educational nature of the structures created um, into the that community and based in the human interaction. And um, the, uh, create a, a theory of um, educational podcasting, no? um, because it's a um, it's a new topic um, that is not a, a lot of uh, research about it. Okay, so uh, this is um, a qualitative um, research uh, with technological um, approach. So um, we uh, we have as population the the podcasts, the communities of uh, podcasts, because uh, one podcast is a community with um, caster audience and um, and the, the content. So um, we are going to uh, research some uh, aspects of uh, podcasts, the topic, the topic approach, the topic into the to the content of the podcast. For example, for example, for example um, physics or history, or and length of the of the podcast, <coughs> the podcast format. Um, in terms of uh, it's an interview or a monologue, chat, uh, the communication style, the um, prosodic elements, and the, um, the register of the communication, uh, the level of the content specialization. Um, there are uh, podcasts very, um, very hard or, or deep into the. Into the the topics and the context, another more firm. Um, the relationship uh, with the audience and uh, the transmedia, uh, transmedia digital uh, channels um, around the the, the world. There are um, there are chats in in social networks about. Uh, about the um, the contents of the of the podcast and that um, that channels the audience uh, speak about the about the contents. So um, in one community of podcasts, um, we have uh, the the podcasters, the um, the authors of the of the podcasts. Uh, we have the audience and the and that channels that I mentioned, um, and we are going to use uh, some um, qualitative instruments to to research this. Um, we have the um, the paradigm of the method of case studies to because uh, one podcast could be a case study. Um, the, uh, we have qualitative interviews to to research uh, of casters of the audience, okay, and um, content analysis to research the, the content of the of the podcast, the top the histories, visit, the, okay, and uh, we have virtual ethnography to research um, the the. Channels, transmedia channels, uh, related with the with the content. Okay, uh, this is all, and thank you very much.
And now we have time to carry out the discussion. We have time, we have more or less 45 minutes to discuss about the different topics presented during this morning. It's not mandatory to uh, announce questions about the presentation of the second part. You can also um, ask about the presentations in the first part of the day. Also, some of you uh, didn't uh, wasn't there. So, some questions for the presentation of this morning. Yes. When you say that uh, the great session is one between head and John, you are referring to the great session about your points or were they about higher education? The higher education to come to the higher education. Yeah. So, so, I thought that. Yes. It's the sister in the world. Yeah, I'm from Portugal. <laughs> <laughs> but I was not sure. I thought it was that. Because I was a sister, but I was not sure. That's why I asked. I think it is the same. Huh? Oh, yeah. uh, the, the graduation of students to come to the university. How many years? The. Que, eh, que, como, como os, os estudantes vão à universidade? Yeah. Before the university, how can I write? Yes. yes they, they, in this Spain, you have to pass an exam. It's pretty, pretty similar, I think. But the local in the university or, or general? It's general. It's not for uh, universities, uh, for the whole universities, public universities. So you need to pass an exam. And you have a score and you can get you, you finish you finish the secondary school and the high school. You finish that. After that, you have to pass an exam. And you complete a prescription and you select different universities. And with the note, uh, the qualification achieved uh, during the exam, you can select the career, something like that. The same in Portugal. It depends, but there are some differences um, with the Latin American countries. No? no in, in, in Argentina, uh, all the students uh, may, uh, may be, can be uh, in, in the South in any university. In any university uh, without an exam or something like that? Yeah, in Belgium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no exam. Yeah, no, 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 no exam. <laughs> no, 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 Totally free. Totally free. Mm -hmm. In Spain and in Portugal, not. In Spain and in Portugal, it's not so expensive like a private university, yeah. but it's not free. Mm -hmm. And it can be expensive for lots of things. Yes. More questions?
with the four frames we have detected, we have identified in the detail. Um, we, we, we will try to compare the sentiment with the, with the representation of the frame of the uh, world. Uh, we're gonna develop, we're gonna carry out uh, first uh, computational control analysis with the four frames, and um, later after this, the sentiment analysis with just uh, positive and negative uh, just to carry it. And one neutral, no um, After this, you compare the frames with the sentiment. And the sentiment will be expressed? Words before we the Yeah, you um, want to try to detect, uh, to identify the sentiment, uh, the sentiment to the to or to in front of the refugees, in front of the the, um, the migration. But it's really difficult because you know there's a lot of ironic <coughs> ironic message, ironic mm -hmm. tweets. So it's gonna be difficult when we're gonna trust. It might give you a suggestion of something that I was just thinking. Since it's hard to, as you mentioned, sometimes there are ironic or sarcastic tweets out there, but if you could have some people help you out so that you can just show them and then they can categorize, like, I think this is ironic, but this was sarcastic, and then you can compare, like, most of the people thought that this was sarcastic, so we take that approach or something of the sort, kind of like reiterate through the analysis of people that have no bias. Maybe that help out a little bit. It's just an idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to do triangulation of what you perceive and others see. Many times it's difficult for us to know if you are speaking in a sarcastic way. Mm -hmm. So for an algorithm, it's for you. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Very much. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, for an algorithm, it's difficult to detect sarcasm. Mm -hmm. Maybe there is a way you can provide that as a result of your PhD. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question also for you, uh, Javier. Okay. Because because you talk about uh, the you must carry out the analysis of uh, images, and how, how did you select these images? ¿Cómo seleccionaste estas imágenes? Ah, you selected uh, 500 pictures, 500, uh, 500 images, photographs from uh, five, from <coughs> ten media from five countries. Western Europe, uh, Western Europe country, uh, from France, Germany, uh, Spain, and Italy. We thought uh, these countries uh, were the most representative of the uh, Western culture. Um, they are uh, worried about this conflict. Um, the picture had to be applied to Google News. So the select the detection was from by Google News. By Google News. From ten sources from yes. each country or in total? From five countries. Ten media, ten sources in five countries. Um, from, uh, by Google News <coughs> with keywords, refuge, refugee, migration, migrant in the five languages of the French yeah. and Italy. Uh, the Gujato, um. Okay, because one of the most difficult part, I think, is select the, collect the data to mm -hmm. analyze. Well, so manual selection. Manual? Yeah, manual selection. Just okay, okay. the keywords in the place. <laughs> okay, manual. Okay. Because you can carry out, an, if you can program yeah. you can carry out the spider in you know, order to collect the. <laughs> More questions? I have a question for Inyaki. <laughs> Inyaki, uh, I have a question for you because uh, when you mentioned that you are going 
going to take in consideration this technique, virtual ethnography, yeah. I, would like, I would like to ask you if there is enough information about this technique, because, well, we know ethnography as a, as a big uh, tool for investigation, but what about virtual ethnography? Is there enough information? Is a new technique? Because, well, for me, it's like a... What? <laughs> uh, yes, uh, it's a very big framework to, mm -hmm. to research, but um, yes, you can. Um, <laughs> it's like a ethnography, but in the virtual world, um, um, you can um, you can use um, a lot of. Um, Little tools into the. Explícalo en español. Sí, sí, no. Vamos a ver. Sí, o sea que. Sí, o sea, hay muchísimas herramientas no cualitativas que, que cabrían dentro de, de la tecnología virtual. ¿no? O sea, al final es eh, eso, recoger esas huellas que van dejando la gente en, en los medios digitales, los que ya están ahí, son productos. Entonces uno pues puede eh, leer los textos, puede interpretarlos, puede... Pues, pues, ahí cabe el análisis de contenido, cabe la, pues eso, la, el análisis más cultural, las conversaciones, el, pues codificar y puedes, eh, puedes ver las categorías que emergen ahí, pues, como las ordenas, para, para ver la interacción que hay dentro de ese, de ese mundo digital. ¿no? Hay un libro eh, muy interesante de Jaime, que es como un clásico de innovación virtual y ahora eh, se está poniendo muy de moda como otro movimiento que tiene mucho que ver que es el de la etnografía que se usa mucho pues por ejemplo en Twitter eh, por, por ejemplo un, eh, del Fresno eh, es un, un autor de la UNED que está especializado en, en encontrar eh, sí pues eh, como eh, digamos, se habla de, un, de una cierta marca o de una cierta idea en, en Twitter y entonces pues, eh, va sacando ¿no? Lo, las opiniones de la gente y va, y va haciendo pues, como unos diagramas, de, pues, como unas representaciones de, pues, de quién opina de esto, quién opina del otro y entonces pues, pueden crearse como... O sea, es, 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 es como... Pues, es un, eh, Internet es una gran madeja de hilo, ¿no? entonces pues, uno tiene que ir tirando de por aquí y por allá y entonces va creando un, un modelo de lo que se quiere decir o de lo que... Encontrando. Es muy, muy pues, etnográfico, muy, muy bueno. <laughs> so, you will be doing something like visualize, visualization of the information that you will collect in order to carry out the analysis. Okay, in order to translate to, to English in a short way. <laughs> <laughs> More questions? I have one question for you. Um, you will carry out a study focused on digital competency in China. Mm -hmm. And there is, is there a framework of comp digital competency in China, or you will be used the European framework? The European framework, because I have searched and there is no very, very, very specific framework for Chinese. No? So I said it's still developing. And I choose the Western part because Western part is like not that developed like the coastal area because it's a little more close. Okay. So I use the European framework. Okay. Because I, I don't know if you know that the digital competency is different definition. Mm -hmm depending on your region. So in Europe, we have a framework, but we, when we do talk about digital competency in USA, it's, it's, it's similar, but it's not exactly the same. And when you talk about this in Latin America, also it's different. Yeah, and Asia is so different also. So I think in Asia, there's not a very specific framework also. So maybe this research in the future could provide some advice for investigators who want to use a special framework for each. I think you can 
share some in common because we have a, a tricky concept. Because digital, uh, digital competence and digital literacy is almost the same, but it's not the same. It's not the same. And now it's like a new literacy. So this is like a, a big madeja, diría, but it's a big problem because from the beginning it's a problem the concept, mm -hmm. depending the authors, depending the continent, and that's the situation that we have the opportunity to uh, design a model, maybe for a, a region, maybe for a continent. So we're going to keep on that. <laughs> yes, but when you talk about digital literacy, you talk about the process to achieve the digital competency and other competencies. Yeah, because there is a different author that is not the same definition, talking about the same concept, you know, it's, it's, it's complex, it's special about the concept, especially for this digital and competence. So, that's we have the problem from the beginning. <laughs> and when I search the digital confidence and digital literacy in Chinese article, I don't know if it's a problem of translation yeah, or something. I always find the digital literacy uh -huh. more than digital yeah. confidence. Yes, we use a lot of competencies yeah. terms mm -hmm. in Europe. Yeah. yeah, exactly because Ferrari yes. and, and this <laughs> these guys they, they are and they know about the competence because competence are not the skills. I mean, competence is complex, yes. it's just an ability. But in North America, it's more common digital literacy. It's almost even after, I mean, it's not the same. So this is the, the tricky situation. In Argentina, digital capabilities. <laughs> because yes. uh, competence is uh, a term um, uh, no, no very agreed. Education system is uh -huh. more uh, 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 rela rela relational with the economy system. Okay. And again, and another term, digital capabilities. <laughs> okay. Because here in Spain it's very common to use competencias. Yeah. It's not common. You, you, yeah. you define the programs in the university using competencies. Uh -huh. So your your courses are based on achieve some competencies. Mm -hmm. eh, en, en Argentina, perfil de egresado y, y capacidades. Sí, capabilities claro, should be capabilities, similar to yes. competencies. Mm -hmm. in <laughs> not, not the same. Yeah, that's the situation. Uh, I mean, the, yes. the language is a Because in, in, in Argentina, uh, if, if you we use competences. Mm, what is that? Okay. Uh, that's a good idea. <laughs> More questions? Because um, there is, uh, there is a, a 
Sonia wants to know <laughs> that they, um, they want to have some proof about the cultural uh, influences and the cultural context and the socioeconomic background influence the only in the in the students in order to continue their careers uh, related to science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Okay. It's, it's general. Um, I mean, you are going to see um, what the, their opinion is about STEAM. Yeah, about STEAM. Uh, um, there is two uh, gender gap in other sectors, uh, like education, uh, but I focus in the STEM um, because the gender gap is more, 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 more bigger. bigger. Because um, I'm working on um, to see a, um, I'm working on computational thinking, and I'm looking forward to see if um, teaching computational thinking could help girls. To have more, to, to be more confident about their <coughs> technological mm. skills. Mm. So mm. yes, um, there uh, there are um, several studies about the efficacy in the competencies and learning competencies, and these are cause and reason to the choice uh, these. Uh, it's a study of the It's a very good study. That's right. Uh, the, um, from what I've learned, for example, the Lego... Um, sorry? Mm -hmm. Legos? Mm -hmm. yeah, to, to build uh, houses and whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, this... Normally, this toy is um, more addressed to male, to boys. Mm -hmm. So later they discovered that in the university, especially in, in the industry, uh, industrial engineering, engineering, yeah, the girls have some problems visualizing the things. Why? Because they didn't have the opportunity to um, to, play to, to play with the Legos. So um, a girl, an engineer. Uh, decided to invent mm -hmm. yeah, to invent uh, a toy, Lego toy for girls. Okay. So mm -hmm. to fomentar the entire idea. Maybe my question is a little bit stupid, but uh, I'm really surprised about the gender gap that you are talking about. Because I was in your chair yesterday, which I found very very interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I was surprised, I was not aware of it. I knew that of course girls and boys are different, men and women are different. But I was not aware that the tech business was so uh, important in defining the careers. So I was really surprised. I thought it was more about the context, the, the social problems, or economic or cultural, and not really the gender. Yeah, really, in, in, in our society, most in the European part, there is a problem related to that. Sometimes the gender gap is there, but it's not visible to the society. <laughs> so we affect the gender gap as something normal, normal. Mm. It, but not. Uh, Sometimes ago, in the paper that I wrote, I was, uh, um, it was about uh, the African implementation in the remote lab, and I was characterizing students. And I said lots of things about students, the country, the, the competencies, or, or skills, yeah. <laughs> uh, the age, lots of stuff. And one of the, the reviewers asked me, what about the gender? And I said, I don't know, because most of the students, I didn't have their names. It was uh, uh, a code, so I didn't have their yeah, education. The and some I had the names, but uh, they are from Brazil. And sometimes I was not sure if it was a yeah. name, but I'm a girl, and I thought, well, it's a question that we it's some fashion, but no, I understand now that. Yes, and also that I, I don't know in other regions, but the European Union is trying to push up 
in order to introduce the gender perspective in the research. Because, of course, there is a gender gap in, in science, technology, blah, 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 but also the gender perspective is useful for other fields, not only for STEM, for example, something like a system, but for example in health, also is science, but it's pretty different um, if you are a man researching about uh, gynecological things than a woman researching of the gynecological things. There are different perspectives and different knowledge about the situation. For example, this is a, a, an example. And this gender gap is in, in all fields. And it's similar in the other way. There are fields that need the men perspective to, to, to extend the, and to complete the, the situation. Abel, do you have a question? Yes. Uh, it's about, um, maybe it sounds like a dumb question, but uh, I'm like, ignorant about this, this topic, but I found it very interesting. And, uh, and so, uh, like the, big, the big goal of, of this topic, um, I mean, what is the big goal? To, when the university has 50% men and 50% women in these careers, that means that there are there are no gap gender gap or how what are the indicators to to consider that there is a gender gap or not? Consider if there is equality you have forty per I think it's forty percent of women and sixty percent of men. This is more or less when the gender gap is mm, not visible. But 40%, 60% de hombres, 40% de mujeres, ahí ya no habría, de, habría igualdad de género. Habría una proporción donde ya no se vería esa brecha. Y, y eso es un, 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 una norma, un acuerdo, un patrón. Sí, en inglés, en inglés. Ah, oh, perdón. Eso para los pibes. Is, 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 is normal. Also, 
in any university, the index of, of uh, women index uh, of graduated is uh, more than the men. Yeah, because the um, employability is more than the men than the women. It's a problem that uh, because women are graduates uh, with uh, with good, uh, well good good qualifications and uh, is uh, is without job without job like trying to use computational thinking to 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 reduce the gender gap is is a lot of this is a, a a research and you need to combine with another research in order to try to solve the problem because there are so many factors mm -hmm. also cultural and uh, socioeconomic factors mm -hmm. in 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 the in the different Sorry. societies mm -hmm. so the problem is in the whole world but it's so different from each re from each country, also from each region inside each country, to the different countries. And also. Yeah, something I would like to share is the fact that even though we're talking about how it's different in every region and everything, the fact that it's a problem worldwide, and that there are efforts and research being taken place right now to try to combat that, is very interesting. And for example, I had the opportunity to work in a project in Japan regarding STEM for girls, to promote that they could become scientists or engineers in the future. And the program itself was directed to high school girls, so they tried to try to motivate the kids to start thinking, maybe I can do a career in that path. And it reminded me a little bit about the Lego fact that you mentioned, how girls normally don't have the toys or the attention to direct them that way. And the way that in Japan they're trying to rectify that, at least in this program, was by inviting over women that had already become an engineer or that were successful in that field so that they could share their experience and share what motivated them, what made them realize, I want to take this path. And based on the uh, successful people that shared that experience, girls would be inspired to, to explore or even consider the fact because maybe they don't want to be an engineer, but to know that they have the opportunity to maybe go down that path is what they're trying to do by raising awareness. So I think it's very interesting and we should be open to the idea that maybe we can implement some of these factors or some of these approaches in our own region or in our own country and try to share the results of that to see if maybe we can come up with new and more interactive ways to promote girls from a younger age to maybe consider that path down the road. Yes. Because I think the same problem is not just for girls, it's also for boys. I mean, there are much less people wanting that kind of degree that it was like because they are degrees that uh, require a lot of paper and uh, you know, doing things like this. Yeah. And they are not very good to their generations. I have three ch children, and none of them went to this end. <laughs> too warm, too tired, too exhausted, you work too much. Yes, the stereotypes of it uh, hold silence. Yes. And I thought, oh, I'm, I'm in a good position to let you know that it's, I have to go to the one. Like it's a good thing, so you see, I'm a physician from the It's so nice. And they said, no, it's not nice. Well, there's a problem in school about mathematics. Yes. Um, the guy said, no, uh, I will study anything that has no mathematics. That's the problem. Yes, because, because they don't have to do mathematics, they don't know that mathematics is life. And then they say, no, no, it's boring, I don't understand, I can do it. Uh, I will not achieve that, and so goodbye. But at least in Portugal, if you want to go to the economics area, you must have mathematics too. Yeah, it's both side and mathematics, and lots of people go to economics or management, and they have mathematics. They don't have the physical thing. It's like just one, not two. But they go to that area, but they do. And sometimes, as the, I, I am at the polytechnic school, it was engineering in Portugal. And my students, when they arrive, I, I am a teacher of uh, special university of physics courses. And they arrive and say, oh, it's too much physics. And I say, what can you expect? You are an engineer. Oh, it's too much physics and mathematics. <laughs> Even for them. In, in, in 
in Argentina, um, is, is traditionally that, uh, for example, in chemistry, the women uh, study uh, teachers in chemistry, and the men study engineering in, in chemistry, because uh, the idea is the woman uh, then teaching, and the men working in the industry.
translation thing, but it's not a translation thing. It's a cultural thing. I don't remember if we talk about this here or in other session. Yes, but the translation yes, is not yes, only trans. Yes, 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 it is. I had the same yes, problem because yes. my bachelor's were in Brazil and Argentina. I saw Brazil. Okay, I'm Portuguese. I translate them, and I saw Argentina. I saw Brazil. I translate them. Okay, so it's really translation is. It's not only translation, it's also cultural adaptation. So take care with this when you carry out your studies in different countries. Although they speak, speak the same language, because in Brazil you speak Portuguese, but it's a different context. Depending in the questionnaire, you speak Christian, sex, or gender. Yes, but here in Spain it's starting to talk about biological sex and gender as the same. Because there are, I'm not expert, but I was with a medical, mm -hmm. with an expert in health. It's not the same. It's not the same, but in sexual, but biology, bio, biology, sex, uh, biological sex, uh, we are not men and women. There are so many hormones and factors that it's impossible, now it's starting to study this, it's impossible to classify as you are black, black or white. So, yes. In Ecuador, in ID, identification, in yeah. is a general, general, I know sex. In the constitution, it exists now a general. So, thank you very much for this discussion. We will continue after the, the lunch. La lunch. After, uh, después de comer. <laughs> we will continue after. Please come because uh, this part will be for doctoral students because we will have peer mentoring. So I will organize you in peers and you 